Uh, Jimmy in San Antonio, thanks for waiting. Jimmy, are you there? Uh, hey, hey uh, what's up, Matt and Tracy? Hello. Hey. Um, I, I, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Um, I had, uh, I think I spoke to Tracy once before, and I had mentioned um, mystical experience, uh, the work that's being done at Johns Hopkins. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're familiar with that, Matt. Well, I may or may not be. I mean, I've heard it referenced before, but you can continue talking with Tracy. <laughs> or talk with Matt. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, the Johns Hopkins, uh, I, I think I said last time they were using intravenous psilocybin, but it was actually uh, psilocybin in a pill form. Okay. And um, their, you know, findings are saying that, uh, that the, it triggers what they're calling a mystical experience, and they've published, you know, papers and the Scientific Journal of Psychopharmacology. So, I mean, it's stuff that they're taking pretty seriously. It's not, you know, this um, airy-fairy nonsense that... Well, so I if it triggers something... Was, it triggers something... That they're that, labeling a, a mystical that, that they're experience. labeling a mystical yeah. experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Like how, a very how do they know it's a mystical author. experience, and what do they mean by mystical experience? Well, from what I've... You know, I mean, you can look into it yourself, but from what yeah, I've... It's a 10-year-old study. For, I, I've got it. I just pulled it up here. It's a 10-year-old press release from... 2000, it's 2006, so it's almost 11 years old. Uh, Hopkins yeah, scientists... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're continuing to do work right now. Sure. Like, the, they show, Hopkins scientists show hallucinogen in mushrooms create universal mystical. They even put they, it in quotes, in, quotes. In, the, in the title, yeah. experience. In the press release. So what do they yeah. mean by mystical and what, what relevant? Is, how? Um, in other words, they're relating it to, you know, the mystics throughout the ages who had similar altered states. And, and of course, I mean, um, you know, people oh, back what's, then... What's an, altered state? what's an altered state and how do we define it? I, I don't mean to just um, be a pedantic prick. The, the, sure. the language that we use surrounding these things matter because if, like, for example, yeah, uh, for example when, they, when they were talking about the God module in the brain, which I think yeah. may, may actually relate to this, um, that was a mm -hmm. label they put on it, but it's not, right. it's, there's, no, there's no demonstrable link to a God thing. It's just we are going to say this is the module in the brain that when we prod it and poke it uh, or send current through it, people have experiences that they describe as spiritual. But that doesn't yeah. do anything to demonstrate that there's, there's actually a truth. spirit. Yeah. Or... And, and all of these things, whether you're using you know, probes in the brain or hallucinogens or whatever, now you're talking about a brain that it is in a chemically altered state. Why would you trust the information and experiences that come from uh, a damaged, essentially, brain, a, a brain that is not functioning correctly? Why would you value that information well, more than a brain that's working correctly? Um, well, oh, I should say normally, like we, but not correctly. Well, we all know somewhat what altered states. We know what a cappuccino is. We know what, you know, digestive problems. I, I mean, these are all subtle altered states, but I mean, uh, Hang they're on. talking about something very... Jimmy, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. You said we all know altered states. I'm not completely sure yeah, like that I do. Ones, I know that there like, are claims yeah, or, about altered or, states, but or, did you also say cappuccino? Yeah, like, you know, a, a caffeine rush or, um, you know, some uh, okay, wine. A few cups okay, of I, wine. I thought there was an altered state called a cappuccino, and I don't even know what a cappuccino oh, is because no, no. I'm not a coffee No, drinker. that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant like a caffeine rush. Okay, so you, um, you, we, chemicals like caffeine affect the body. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So what, does that what tell they're us? talking about is, is, a, is a very particular altered state of consciousness, that, you know, that they're, they're labeling mystical experience, and, and they've defined it by certain characteristics that manifest. Well, I think the they're reaching the back text. to the idea that this is what has traditionally been called a mystical experience, and what they're saying is they can recreate this using these yes. drugs. Yeah, yeah. From, from the work of William yeah. James and so forth. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and Roland, Roland Griffiths, uh, the guy who leads the study, uh, as well as a lot of people who, who've had this type of experiences, they end up with a, a view that I think is alternative from atheism and theism, where they see religion as a byproduct of mystical experience, like all the, you know, the major figures in, in history, uh, like Muhammad and uh, Christ and so forth, uh, Gautama. Okay, so let me, as, let, me, know, let me ask this. So I don't necessarily have an issue with that, other than words like spiritual and myth, mythical, mystical, sorry, uh, are not yeah. very well defined. And so mm -hmm. if they think, let, let's say... Well, they say, define them in the study. <laughs> okay. I'm sure they would. I mean, they are well defined. <laughs> uh, I guess what I need I mean, what had... I need to ask is this: Are we talking about experiences that people label as mystical because they that's just the label they put on them, or 
are we trying to argue that there is something supernatural about it, or is it just all natural? No, no. I think what we're what they're trying to point out is, I mean, most people have not had this experience, you know, and so, I mean, they are trying to define it. It, it is an altered state. It has nothing to do with the supernatural. Okay, um, it's something that there's. Yeah. So, so basically, you're calling in to talk about how Johns Hopkins has given drugs mm -hmm. to people, and they had strange experiences that they would call mystical. I wouldn't necessarily characterize it that way because they're they're concluding that it's something. Uh, what they're triggering the mystical experience, uh, the reason why they kind of separate it from just getting high on drugs is because uh, it's, uh, it would be otherwise natural uh, to human beings. So, like, if you engage a discipline like meditation or, or uh, asceticism, or uh, it's also speculated to occur in near death, um, you would have a, a similar experience. Okay. And, I mean, no, they, no, Jimmy, here's, here's what I'm asking. All of this is about something that is natural, right? Yes. Okay. I don't understand the point. I don't understand how, I mean, okay, there's potential coolness here. I think, if anything, it would kill off religious ideas about the supernatural as, hey, you know, we can have these experiences through other or similar quality experiences through other ways. Uh, not that it would yeah. remotely support any religious thing, but at the end of the day, we're still just talking about, hey, People have been reporting experiences and labeling this way, and now we can induce them. Okay. Yes. And so, I mean, a lot of, uh, I mean, a, a perspective that emerges from, from uh, these investigations into the mystical experience is what they're referring to as perennial philosophy. I think I mentioned it last time to Tracy. I don't know if she ever bothered looking into it, but, um, like, you know, Aldous Huxley, Terrence McKenna, uh, so on and so forth, um, they... After these type of experiences, they had this view where they no longer saw religion as a, an argument whether God or exists or not, but uh, but they saw these these very specific altered states as uh, uh, bringing religion as a byproduct. So you know that Gautama, um, when he had this experience, he would go on to found Buddhism, uh, Christ, so forth. But, and I mean, the characteristics inside these experiences. Are, do relate to all the, you know, the literature in religion. Like, um, I know a lot of people joke about, you know, being one with everything, but, but the way they characterize it in the experience is that you have a literal impression of a unity inside a phenomenon in consciousness. Okay. You know, and... Why, why should I care about any of this, I guess, is what I'm asking. Well, um, because, uh, I mean, I, I would think that it, maybe it might change your perspective as well. Instead of seeing... Change it, it to it, what? Argument I already accept the natural world, and I accept that people have well, different experiences, which we can also induce... We can, to we a, can a, have a more perennious... To, a, like, a, per, a perennious perspective, like the individuals who... Like Roland Griffiths, I mean, I mean, his idea on religion now is not, you know, like... Um, you, you keep... A, a nonsense. And you keep mentioning names... I, yeah. I prefer ideas. I don't give a rat's ass about a name. Well, perennial philosophy, the idea that um, uh, our religion is actually a byproduct of this uh, particular altered state. Okay, that, I know, don't care. I'm asking why I should care about this. My, well, issue, my, I, I, issue I is th my issue is this. Are the claims of a particular religion true or not? I, I, it might be interesting yeah. to say that some religions are... Do you think that you're going to go up to any individual who's religious, and say, hey, maybe religions are all a byproduct of, you know, mushrooms, mushrooms and, and uh, meditation experiences that produce the same sorts of effects. What do you think that, what impacts is that going to have on them? Well, I, I, I prefer to, talk, to speak to atheists because most theists are kind of closed-minded about it. <laughs> they will think you're the devil and even talking about it. Yeah, and, you I, know, I, I'm just wondering. Contemporary churches don't even discuss it. Uh, of course not, be because the they have that. a relationship with the risen Christ. Is the, That's their perspective on it. So, you know, it's like when I talked with Ray Comfort, there's no way to convince him that God doesn't exist because God is as real to him as his wife. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Well, I mean, I, they sort of, I mean, if this, is, if this view is correct, then that means that uh, all of contemporary, you know, Western religion today is, has lost touch with its roots. Where wrong, wrong, Christ wrong, wrong. That's a fallacy. Okay, the fact that we can, the fact that we can replicate 
similar types of experience doesn't show you that any other one is actually not true. It could be the case that Jehovah's Witnesses are the one true religion that have a tie to a God and they experience something that's spiritual. And even if everybody else's religion is a false byproduct of the sort of thinking and problems with a brain on hallucinogens or in a meditative state, that doesn't tell you anything at all about whether or not the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong. So you can't say... Well, I'm I mentioned more in the vein of uh, Adam Watts, uh, the way he would speak about perennial philosophy, that uh, Christ was put on a pedestal, so he was the one appointed dean to, to have such an experience, but no one else. So it squeezed the possibility out, whereas if you go to Eastern religions, where they practice uh, these uh, meditations in temples and so forth, um, they're actually attempting to engage this experience. They, you know, they have a relationship with it, whereas... Um, the, the Buddha wasn't placed on a pedestal. They realized that it's a potential in everyone, but in a pre-scientific way of speaking about it, they, you know, you have samadhi or you have nirvana. It, it was kind of the a only way, way this way is relevant is if the experiences they have are leading them to a truth. Um, well, I mean, they, the uh, you could almost say that the samadhi is a synonymous term for mystical experience. I don't know what the um, hell that, that has is. to do with what I just said. Seriously, I mean. Well, I mean, you said leading them to a truth, so they are in, they are engaging some type of altered state. What good I is mean, a okay, be, Jimmy? What good is a mystical experience? Is it is it teaching us something that's true? Um, I well, in the, the 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 way they characterize it, I, I'm really not sure, but uh, I, I, it may be. I mean, there, the one one core aspect of mystical experience is this felt sense of unity. You know that everything being everything in the cosmos has one single unity. Okay, um, that's it's one kind of like. Let me just. Can I yeah, help? Yeah, please, maybe please, for a please. What if everyone who went through this came to the conclusion that there are two suns in the sky, and they all declared that they could see two suns? I think what Matt is asking is, okay, so people do these things, they come to similar conclusions. We can induce this similar state in a lab. Does that mean that there's some ultimate truth there that they're seeing that we can confirm is actually accurate? that it maps to the world in some real way that um, anybody else's belief doesn't? Um, I mean, though, I, what I see is uh, seeing all, if you see all religion as a byproduct of mystical experience, and the underlying core of whatever they profess, uh, when you scratch all religions, you're going to find the insights gained from these types of experiences. And I pointed I mean, out that that's a fallacy. You cannot conclude that all religions are byproducts of mystical experiences. Have you have you investigated all by -pro all religions and confirmed when, that they uh, are? That 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 is what perennial philosophy is. You it's cannot test dissection. for that. What I'm wondering is, no, you would cannot. you would you accept that people can come to the same conclusions from different? perspectives, like that two people can, can come, can look at different things and ultimately still derive the same information from it. And in this day and age, I think that's what happened. I, I think like all this, people like the, I just mentioned, like Aldous Huxley, Terrence McKenna, they, they did come to this conclusion, like once they had this experience. They right, no but what I'm saw. saying, is, is it possible that there are multiple ways to investigate something that would drive you to the same conclusion, that maybe you could do different experiments that were both valid but different? and still derive the same uh, conclusions from them? Um, perhaps, I mean, the, the reason that you still is I think you it's could, but what, what I'm saying is, what if, what if these religions, these Western religions, come to these insights for a particular route, through a particular route, and these other people are coming to these same conclusions from another route? I mean, isn't it possible that two people, that that it, one route doesn't invalidate the other route. Like if I decide that, hey, we should love each other, and I come through, I find I come through my life experiences, which are completely different than someone else's, and they come to that same conclusion. Isn't it possible that we reach that conclusion both through valid means coming at it through an entirely different path? I, I think you could, I, but I mean, uh, one reason I think people do is because of the experience is universal. It's not, you don't have to be religious to have it. Uh, like I, for instance... Uh, if I know, you, and that's you, fine. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You can go another route, right? Like this person took mushrooms, this person read their Bible or something. Yeah. But they so came like, to I the mean, same uh, conclusion. And what I'm saying is maybe the fact that someone got there through a mushroom doesn't invalidate the fact that someone else picked up a Bible and saw that passage and they related to it and adopted it for themselves through that method. 
I, you can probably come through it conceptually, I, I think, but a lot of the, the, I mean, the mystical experience is usually characterized by, like, intuition. Like, it's, I kind of shoves it in your face. And, um, like, for instance, like, a, an, an atheist that might have this experience, he may not be inclined to call it God, but he sure. may say something equally absurd as, like, uh, I, I felt uh, I was somehow able to glimpse a higher dimension. And this was, you know, this is his, uh, what he could squeeze out of the experience. Are there higher dimensions? Are no, this, this is not necessarily to say. Okay, there is. then. It's just, this is, this is, this is the He's impression. He's saying how somebody the, might describe it if they didn't believe in God. I care about what's actually real. Why are we talking about flights of fancy? Well, I mean, well, this is all just metaphor, but it's what, what's real is the experience. And it's very, you know, it is that I, I don't, a lot of people I'm, underestimate it. Jimmy, I'm desperate to find a reason to care. And, and I, I swear, reading off the names on the books on your shelf, it does nothing. And saying, hey, this is all just metaphor. It's just, I, I'm concerned about the real world and about claims and whether yeah. or not they're true. And I care about whether or not people's beliefs are rationally justified. I would, I'm still what? desperate to find anything in what you're I, talking what? about that is, that is relevant. Well, I think... Er I mean, it all points to the universal experience, like that, like all, all these so things. So, do like you believe that? I don't know what you mean by universal experience, and why. And when you say it all points to the universal experience, please tell me what. The like, in other mean. words, you could you could potentially have this experience if if you partook. Like, um, they. I don't spoke care about, about the experience, Jimmy. I don't yeah. care who could have it. I want to know right. about whether or not what the experience points to is true. Right. I mean, because, frankly, we could all sit in an electric chair and have the same experience. We could, we could all be lobotomized and have the same right. experience, but that doesn't give us information on reality. Well, I mean, whether everything is truly a unity or not, I, I mean, I don't know if we can answer that. And to know if whatever it's showing us is true, what, you know. What do you um, mean by everything being a unity? Uh, well, I mean, there's an uh, intuition inside the experience that everything is intimately in, in, interconnected in, in ways. I don't I give a rat's ass about understand. intuitions. I care well, about I, reality. I think from a physics standpoint, isn't everything already demonstrated to be connected, or at least when's the last yeah, solidly I, I think theorized? The I mean, I, has science I started using intuition as a method now? I don't know. I think mystics have used that. But, right, I mean, and I'm asking uh, why we should care about mystical intuitions. Are they leading us to truth? I, I, I think they're saying one and the same thing with what physicists are now discovering, you know? Um, you, you think mythicist intuitions are saying the same thing of, as what physicists are now saying about what? Yeah, like uh, about everything being ultimately one. I think you're hung up on metaphor because, first of all, uh, what physicists mean, well, all right, go find a physicist who actually says everything is one. Uh, I, I don't know any that I'm aware of. They're probably out there. Find out if they mean the same thing as the intuitions. Because w now we've gotten to the point where some mystical intuitionist made this vague, everything is one. And now you're looking to see if you can find a way to make modern notions about the world that are based on evidence fit that. That is exactly the same thing that charlatans do when they make a vague prediction, and then we call it prophecy. It's the same thing that happens when people go looking through uh, Nostradamus' text and saying, oh, if you read this this way, it's talking about JFK. It's the same thing that happens when you put the Bible code text together and go doing your circle word find and say, look, it predicted Trump. No, it didn't. The connection here is completely backward. The time to believe something is when there's actual evidence for it. These, these uh, intuitionists, there's no demonstration that they had advanced access to information just because you can take a metaphoric view of what they said and twist and turn it so that it matches up with something we now know is real. Because the only way we know it's real is from the science. Yeah, and Even if know, they were I mean, getting I'm, intuitions, they are completely useless until we verify them. So why should we care? And, and I, I wasn't directing your attention towards that. I, I, I think it offers uh, an alternative perspective to, to atheism and theism. Like, you no longer see God. How is this, this remotely? Entity, okay, entity. first of all, there's no, there's no alternative perception with regard to theism or atheism. There either is a God or there's not, right? 
I see that's where I disagree. I, no, I think no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Either there is a God or there's not, right? The, those are the only two options. Is there some other option? Have you have you managed to come up with a whole new type of logic? I think this is what, that's what this is. I think that's what perennial philosophy is. So you're throwing out logic. You're throwing out identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. You are saying that there's something else other than A and not A. No, I, I think uh, when you have this perspective, it, A becomes something else. What you is no up with the perspective the, callers today? I don't care about perspective. I care about reality. Either something well, is either either a it, statement is true or it's not true. Those are the only two options. Well, if you define God as like a, I don't entity. care about the definition, Jimmy. A statement, any statement, is either true or not true. Give me any other option other than true or not true. I, I mean, I, I just think it's seen, it's seen differently. Like, um, like uh, in other words, it doesn't completely reject the idea of God. It sees it as something else. Why are you talking about as, God? I thought this was an I'm atheist, holding. <laughs> I'm holding a bottle in my hand. Is that statement true or not true? Oh, depending on whether you're holding it or not. Uh, oh, he, but he can't see. <laughs> oh, you can't see, so you're not, you're not watching. He is holding yeah, no, up I a bottle. Uh, you and I are having a conversation. Is that statement true or not true? Sure, it's true. Okay, is there any other option other than true or not true? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Well, you're right, there's not. I mean, that this is what we understand about identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle. So either a God exists... Or uh, either some God exists or no God exists. Those are the only two options, right? Yeah, uh, under a certain parameter. Why did it take... Yeah, no, so like, what, what do you mean under certain parameters? What like other parameters... God... Either so, some I mean, God... people define God Jimmy, very differently. Jimmy, statement. Some God exists. That statement is either true or not true, correct? Sure, but I also adhere to agnosticism. There's with the no I, but... Where, where, you can't say sure, but the answer is yes. That statement is true or not true. But, but you're also using a vague word, like you're not defining it. I'm like, not. Uh, it doesn't matter. It does. Fergal, burgle, Minergal, burgle. That statement is true or not true. Um, if you're a pantheist, you think everything is God. So you know, like to them, that's true. Jesus, uh, it H. Can Christ. True or not true. I just mumbled a nonsense phrase. Fergal, burgle, Minergal, burgle. Yeah. That nonsense phrase is either true or not true, correct? Sure. And there's no other option? I suppose not. But I, I, okay. again, I think it's really based on definitions. No, it's not. Oh. This is so confusing. You, you acknowledge this, and then you say, oh, but it's based on definitions. You don't well, understand the mean, fundamental foundations of so A or not uh, A. All right, well, then, if you see it that way, then I suppose it's the not a, view... What other is, way can is, you uh, see it? What other way can you see it? Because, well, I mean, okay, an atheist defines God as No, way. this has and nothing then, to do with atheism or theism. This is about the structure of logic, a Venn diagram sure. with a single circle, and everything... Everything is either inside that circle or not inside that circle, correct? Oh, okay. So, well, then to appease what you're saying, um, I, I, the per, this perspective of perennial philosophy, I suppose, can be considered atheist in that it doesn't uh, acknowledge uh, the entity and the, the supernatural entity. Please tell me two um, words in that last sentence that had anything the fuck to do with the Venn diagram I was talking about. A Venn diagram? Uh, well, I mean, I, I still don't understand your point. <laughs> I know. I give up. I mean, I... I'm not talking the, about the God. I'm talking about raw foundational logic. Here's a statement. The statement, no matter what it contains, no matter what the definitions are, the statement is either true or not true, and those are the only two options. Sure. Yeah, I, I agreed with that. Okay. So here's a statement. Some God exists. By your own agreement, that statement is either true or not true. Uh, sure. I'm, you know, I, it's either true or not true. I agree. Okay. So either there's a God or there's not. And there's no other option, right? I agree. You didn't five minutes ago, so I guess that's progress.
Well, no, I, I, I've always agreed with that. I, I, it's just that I, in perennial philosophy, like words like God, Brahman, are no longer seen in, in, in the light that they were seen as, I guess, maybe an atheist or theist might look at it. Um, it's all, you know, it's, 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 that's why I, I consider it an alternative perspective, because, I mean, uh, in other words, Brahman is uh, the metaphor out of the mystical experience, like, or samadhi, or the beatific vision in, in Christianity, the agape, I if mean, I let you keep talking, I'm going to get fired, Jimmy. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and they can't even really, I mean, it, the board could say you're done, but <sighs> doesn't matter whether you're talking about perennial philosophy, because that's true or not true. The Brahman notion of God, that's true or not true. doesn't matter what it is. Everything is either true or not true. And I care about whether or not it's true. So telling me about mysticists who are having these intuitions that you can view as metaphor and manipulate them so that they seem to match something else somebody else found in reality, my answer is, so what? The reason those things are valuable is because somebody found them in reality, not because somebody intuited them. Yeah. They're of no value until we confirm them. And I think it's also a misunderstanding sometimes when, well, and it might not even be in this case, but a lot of times people do misunderstand when a study comes out like that and they use that you know, word in quotes, and they take it to mean a little bit, I think, take it to, I don't want to mean a little bit more, but they, uh, they give it a little more emphasis sometimes than I think it is intended to just say, hey, we can, I mean, putting people on anesthetic gives everybody pretty much, you know, the same experience. Um, putting people on all kinds of drugs will give them very similar experiences. It'll, it'll affect your brains in similar ways because we're all human beings with very similar brains. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's not that I'm not interested in a scientific study that shows no. that we could induce these things. Sure. It's what does it tell us? Right. And if your conclusion is, ah, oh, it tells us that religions are all this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So the one thing is that we're blocked from actually investigating and confirming the existence of the supernatural or its ability to interact. Right. Uh, we are almost out of time, but I got, I, 